Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we will talk about Cloud Secure Edge. Cloud Secure Edge is an SSE solution or security service edge. An SSE solution provides secure access to private applications and resources and public ones from anywhere. We can grant access to resources regardless of the location. On-premises services, cloud services, SaaS applications or web browsing control. Later on, we will break down all the possibilities. In today's video, we are going to focus on obtaining a demonstration license, the initial setup, and a connector to one of our firewalls. A connector that is available starting from version 7.1.2 only for generation 7, for access to on-premises services and publishing a web server. Let's get started. The first step, as we were saying, is to get the demonstration license. To do this, we will log into our MySuny World account. And once we are logged in, we will go to Product Management and there, in Free Trials. As of the date of recording this video, the trial for this CS has been available for a few days. We need to select the data center. We have one available in Frankfurt, Germany, and enter a name for the cloud. As you can see, names cannot contain dots so we are going to change the name and click on the try now button right now my sony wall is creating the instance and soon we will see that license available you can see that for now in the products of this tenant it's not available we're going to update it now to force it and we can already see it at the top of the list, CSE 01, which is what I called it. From this moment on, we can go to the management of Cloud Secure Edge. Always from Capture Security Center, we can see all the licenses we have available. And you saw that forcing the update also shows the option to click on it. And we can then look ourselves on the console by default, we land on the home page where we have all the options that we'll see later. Let's go to the firewall section. We've logged in. We see that this is a model. It's a TZ570 with version 7.1.2. Uh, we have the connector. The connector is found in the network menu and here, Cloud Secure Edge. The only thing we have to do here for now is activate it and press the accept button. Later on, there will be more things we need to do in the firewall, but for now that's it. Since the firewall and the CSE are registered on the same account, let's say they meet and we see that within the management of CSE, the connector already appears available with the serial number of the firewall, which I have hidden, but well, I have left it there. And saying there's a, it ends in before. So we can see it's the same connector ending in before. If we enter the connector management and click the edit button, we can start specifying which networks this connector will find on the other side. In this case, I will publish two. One is a 172 16.01. 00 slash 16. This network isn't even in that firewalls LAN. We will find it through a VPN tunnel. And the other network is a network that is X2. Okay, the 192.168.1189. We add those networks and from now on, CSE knows which networks this firewall connector will find. Once we have this information configured, we can go back to Cloud Secure Edge into the Network Center and this information has already been incorporated or we have the possibility from this point, from this side rather, to certify or allow access to local networks. On one side in CSL, we say which local networks we find and on the local connector side in the firewall, we need to certify that access and corroborate 
which local networks actually are. In fact, we could be more specific here and use more concrete objects for access. I am maintaining both the subnet as well as, as you can see, it showed the network behind a VPN tunnel. From the perspective of CESE, that's not a problem. Once we have it, we can see the status showing all the established connections. That's all we need to do on the firewall side. If we refresh the view within CESE, we see that it now appears as reporting. This means the tunnel connection is established. Let's start with a traditional client VPN tunnel or the possibility for a user PC to connect to these local networks. For this, with a service tunnel, we need to enter a name for the service tunnel and, well, this will be the name user C. Let's select one we've already used, XPIN service tunnel. Now, if we add the networks, we could have multiple connectors with different serial numbers. In this case, we select the only one we have, and for now, we leave all the upper parts free. Let's keep it simple. I already mentioned this is an introductory video, so we'll allow access to everyone. Uh, we'll deal with policies and such later. For now, let's keep it simple. We'll also publish a hosted website. In this case, through the lab network, I have access to my on-premise NSM. I give it a name, the IP address of the server, which is a lab IP. We need to specify port 443. And in this case, it's insecure because the certificate is not working. We added the policy. All users have permission to access it, which is not ideal, but it's the initial setup. Uh, and once we have that, we will save and validate. Yeah, great. We have now published both the service tunnel and the hosted website. Let's see how a user integrates. We'll do it with local users. I'm going to create a user, which will be myself, Barhadeos, and I'll enter my email address, barhadeosasonigual.com. We create the user, and here the application tells us that an invitation has been sent to integrate with this organization. Let's see. This is the Outlook client, and here we actually have the notification that CSE provisioning had been done in the Jupyter tenant. Here we have the email inviting me to join the organization. The only thing we have to do now, you will see, is take the application and enter the information we have here. So let's go. Focus on the application. Here we have it. Uh, and once, well, this is because I already have organizations. In this case, we have to add an invitation, a new organization. And when we do that, we are asked for the invitation code. We paste it without spaces and click on continue. From there, you've seen it opens a web page and it's here where we have to enter the username and password. That password is temporary. In fact, it's going to ask me to change it right now. We copy, we get it, get it. And we see that indeed it is asking me to change it. Let's go ahead and change it. And once it's changed, we will see that the website tells us the login is correct. And we see that the application, all right, let's give it another try, login. Here we see, yes, this is the usual process. Login successful. I didn't enter the credentials again. It was already saved. 
and I see I'm logged in on sonicspain.net. I have, although it's not enabled, the information about which networks I will have access to with the service tunnel. But for now, well, there we are. Okay. So if we scroll down, we have direct access to this NSM. Notice that I'm accessing a URL. This traffic is going through authentication, through policies that I might have in CSE, which in this case you have already seen that there are no policies. Everyone accesses, everyone with credentials, obviously, but it's quite simple, as you can see. Before enabling this tunnel, I'm going to check that if I try to access 189.120, which is part of the range. I'm rewinding this. You see that I have no access to C server. The service tunnel, this traffic will be allowed. We are going to bring the connection back. And here we see that it immediately asks for credentials. I'm not even going to log in because, well, as you can see, it's quite simple. All user accesses and such will be in the reporting. Later on, we will also do a... We will dive into what we see inside the reports. We will leave this video here, as that was today's goal. You can now start using your free trial license of CSE. And as always, if you have any questions, we are here to help. Thank you very much.